now we are going to start with the chemical tankers theory so you can say this is a chemical tanker so generally chemical tankers are you can say painted red and all they have uh, they are small size and you see and this is odd fill very popular uh, owners for on chemical tankers they have many ships and you have some deck tanks and you see so many pipelines and structures on the deck so this is how a chemical figure looks like so we we'll study in all the details so main things or main topics which are covered under chemical tankers are hazards of chemical tankers generally the hazards we have discussed fall into three main categories as we have discussed before inhalation ingestion and skin contact inhalation move to fresh air ingestion vomiting and milk and uh, skin contact shower with fresh water and then other explosion and spill hazards are all there and toxicity of some gases then reactivity so we will see those hazards then categories of chemical cargo so there are five categories of chemical cargo x y z os and there are some uncategorized substances then there are types of chemical tankers so there are different types ship type for chemical tankers ship type 1 ship type 2 ship type 3 and there are types of tanks types of tanks are integrated tanks and gravity tanks then you have a ibc code we will study which is giving list of all the chemicals to be carried and different requirements and properties of them for uh, alleging and uh, type of tank category all those things then procedure and arrangement manual listing all the procedures for all the uh, operations on the ship loading discharging tank cleaning uh, purging inerting gas cleaning so threshold limit value and order threshold we have covered in hazards marpol nx2 discharge criteria we will see the marpol and operational checks pre arrival checklist pre discharge checklist all those things and the cargo report so what are the main hazards of chemical cargos so main hazard first is of course flammability or explosion because a uh, spill is uh, not in comparison to oil it's not that much big concern because most of the chemicals are soluble in water then toxicity chemicals uh, in chemical tanker the toxicity is much more and higher than comparison to oil because many many chemicals just by uh, taking 25 ppm means the 25 ppm is like uh, 25 milliliters in uh, 1 million of what you can say 1 million milliliter of gas around you so it's like very very fine amount of gas is present in the air can cause very harmful effects on your health so toxicity is main chemical cargos are very dangerous that way we say so many people have uh, many side effects you can say of losing hair or uh, sexual dysfunction or so many uh, health effects digestion problems stress so like isocyanide benzene carcinogenic isocyanide if you just put on the tongue immediate that you cannot even survive to see what happened so so very very strong chemicals are there and toxicity or poisonous nature of chemicals is what is makes the chemicals most hazardous then of corrosivity of course many chemicals uh, corrode the metal ferrous corrosive to metals like uh, your acids and all 
this is sulfuric acid nitric acid phosphoric acid phosphoric acid is very corrosive sulfuric acid is very corrosive then reactivity so many chemicals react with your tank coating or materials or if there is a leak they react with other materials they form exothermic reaction they can cause explosion so self reaction is also there polymerization they form like a cake then molasses and all so this is a big problem cargo gets contaminated or changes shape and then it's no use and as asphyxiation is breathing problems because of a lot of gas or reduction of oxygen in the environment then uh, chemical tank there are also uh, problems regarding like car many cargoes get frozen at normal temperature or something like you know palm oil at normal temperature like ghee it, it uh, gets like a waxy or frozen and then it's very difficult to discharge then many cargo have a lot of sediments and there are if you you can keep going on many cargoes can cause burns and all on the skin so uh, chemical tankers are built under stringent requirements of marpol annex 2 and ibc code so the construction equipment of uh, all the chemical tankers is done as per marpol annex 2 and the ibc code giving the different types of tank ship type and the tank types 1g 2g 3g we will see then specific cargo requirements are spelled out and has to be complied with so all ibc code lists all the specific cargo requirements in chapter 17 mainly and then you have chapter 15 and 16 so we have uh, various categories of cargo so first is category x what is category x noxious liquid substances if discharged into the sea so noxious liquid substances means chemical cargo so chemicals and once we and we are discharging them into the sea after tank cleaning or deblasting operations they are uh, having a major hazard like the most hazardous materials are category x the main hazard is from category x chemicals like isocyanide and all will fall in this category and major hazard to marine environment human health and therefore they uh, prohibition it's prohibited to discharge these chemicals directly into the marine environment so we have to dilute them and do a pre wash and all that we will see so directly category x substances are prohibited to discharge then same uh, category y or uh, we have to be smart to write the definition all the wording is same only there is a small change instead of major hazard in category y they just present a hazard hazard means it's just a uh, average hazard so the discharge into the sea has to be limited then you have category z which presents a minor hazards and category other substances which possesses no hazard then there are substances uh, which are still uh, like in our scientists are discovering every day and trying to find some new materials or there are some chemicals which are uh may be recognized but were not shipped so they are not categorized in ibc chapter 17 or others so this new chemicals which are found they are called uncategorized chemicals or uncategorized substances and uh, it has been uh, so first what if you if uh, any administration or flag state or port or shipper they find a substance which they want to load and it is not categorized so first uh, the state has to be requested flag state so flag state will be requested for assessment of that chemical so they will carry out all the assessment and test lab test at what are the hazards and properties boiling point flash point corrosivity flammability all the test of the chemicals will be carried out and you will have the guidelines of this uh, chemicals in appendix 1 of annex 2 of the marpol that how we should 
go about uncategorized chemicals assessment is given in appendix one of annex two of marpol then uh, all the involved states uh, should reach a full agreement on the provisional assessment of the assistant shall not be carried so the whoever the loading flag state or country and the discharging flag state or country and the flag state of which the ship is part of all these will uh, assess all the properties and hazards of the chemical and uh, they will reach a full agreement including the private port authority or government port authority wherever they are being loading discharge and then only this substance can be carried so suppose you receive a chemical name on your uh, ship and you check it is in your uh, certificate of fitness uh, and attachment list or you check in ibc code so if it is not in your certificate of fitness list you cannot carry obviously but if it is listed in uh, ibc code then you can take permission from flag state uh, as per whatever precautions is listed in the ibc if you are able to take you can request for permission but if that chemical is not listed in the ibc code also then uh, all this assessment of the hazards and uh, properties of chemicals has to be done by the flag state and then um, uh, all once the agreement is reached and all data is collected and you get the permission then only you can load it so once they reach the agreement within 30 days of the agreement Uh, the producing or shipping state shall send the full details to IMO. So all these details have to be sent to IMO also, so that later on, these publications can be uh, published in the IBC code. So uh, all this is the IBC code chapter seventeen, and uh, when you see. Uh, there is a list of equipment is required as per ibc for each type of cargo and generally uh, on some ships there are some these equipments are given to the ship when the ship is delivered in the dry dock shipyard so when the ship is delivered some equipments um, equipments are given for the requirement for loading of some different types of chemicals and uh, if this equipments are not maintained properly what happens over a period of time this equipments you now they are just uh, lying here and there or not maintained neither they get it's not working properly malfunction or somebody takes them or it gets signed off with the people or they are very uh, flashy to use fancy to use uh, like torch lights and all Uh, good intrinsically safe high luminant torch light for tank cleaning are there are very uh, useful so people can use when they have shortage but they are required for the some different cargoes so to avoid like suppose you are going to a third world country where this uh, new cargo has to be loaded or uh, hazardous cargo has to be loaded and uh, owner says okay you have to load this cargo and so you check the requirements so you need this, this equipment and at that time in this third world country if that equipment is not available then owner will really fire you that why this equipments are not maintained and all we had given it so maintenance of this uh, equipments is uh, very necessary and uh, for that you can what you can do you can make one locker in your uh, locker room store room in the ibc locker and you can uh, keep a inventory every month and if you find if something is missing or something then you can ask the person concerned like from peer something so these equipments are like we are giving for a palm oil gear or like that samples so now let's see uh, the ibc code chapter 17 so you can see this all the cargoes it's very difficult to pronounce all this cargo also and uh, like first cargo if you see this is poly something something so 
first we see column A is your name of the cargo. Then you have C, this is category of car cargo. Yes, cargo is category Z. Then you have the danger. Danger is uh, either it is uh, safety danger or pollution. So if it is only P, it's only it's a marine pollutant only, but it does not cause danger to any skin or inhalation or something. Then what is this three? Is is uh, ship type three? So that is the minimum requirement. Ship type three means there is no distance from the hull. So uh, that is the minimum requirement. You, you can carry it in ship type one also if you have some restrictions. Then F is type of tanks. So type of tanks like 2G, so uh, uh, two gravity tanks. So one is 1G is the uh, most dangerous chemicals are loaded in 1G, then 2G and 3G. So uh, what is this is uh, gravity tanks means uh, which are not pressure tanks. Pressure containment is uh, less than 0.7 millibar. So if it, any tank which can take pressure more than 0.7 millibar is a pressure tank. Otherwise, it's a gravity tank. So what is this, uh, uh, what you call, like in VLCCs, you have a vapor pressure of 1500 mm generally it's less, but on chemical tankers, the vapor pressure setting uh, tank which can take is around 2000 mm of water gauge, but still it is uh, less than 0.7 millibars always. That is a cutoff between gravity and pressure tank. Then you have this uh, gauging system which is uh, uh, what you call uh, open gauging or closed gauging. And then you have this H, which is uh, padding. Padding means generally we don't need padding. Padding means the empty space in the cargo after loading, we have to fill it with inert gas or not. And then you have uh, Either it's not required or sometimes it's dry means you need to put this steam humidifier which the cargo is water sensitive or something. So dry padding is required. So uh, like that you have all the different columns. So let's see just, uh, so now about like generally on chemical tankers, we don't have uh, pressure tankers. So let's see, let's see. So just on the top of this page, if you see, you will find the, uh, the each column, what it is uh, mentioning, uh, the coding of these tables. So chapter 17, the starting, we have the product name, UN number, column B was deleted. Then you see, uh, C is pollution category. Then uh, hazards, S is safety and P is uh, for pollution, pollution hazards. Then uh, column E is your ship type one, two or three, which is given again in detail here. Then you have tank types. Tank types can be one is independent tank, then two is integral tank. So independent tank is for very hazardous cargo, you know, like on uh, gas refrigerated plant if uh, the sh cargo is to be loaded at very high uh, very negative temperatures and if it cracks because of thermal stress the stress will go to the hull so to avoid that we have independent tank which is not connected to the hull and integral tank means this is connected to the hull and gravity tank with pressure is less than 0.7 bar setting and pressure tank is more than 0.7 millibar so here you can see generally on chemical tankers, you will have this two G types, like integral tanks connected to the ships and uh, gravity tanks, because we don't have that much pressurized cargoes and all. Gas carriers, we have a lot of pressurized gas ships, so we have a lot of pressurized tanks. But since it is a category, they have put it. Then tank venting is either it is controlled venting or open venting. Then next is H is the tank environment. Either we need inerting, padding, or drying, or 
natural or forced ventilation or no requirement. Then I is uh, electrical equipment, some uh, temperature categories are there. And uh, like that, if we have various codes. Now, if we see in the MARPOL, at the end of Annex 1, there is something called unified interpretation, which is an explanation of all the words, like for some words where you get, you might get confused. Like some, some people say this is in oil category. Some people say palm oil is in chemical category. Some people will say in Annex 1 category. So here, uh, they will clearly, um, uh, mentioned that all uh, animal and vegetable oils are found uh, under category of NX2. So this is uh, amendment also, and this is a new requirement. Then treatment of oily rags, how we have to do as per NX5. So all the uh, detailed explanation, UF, UI's uh, unified interpretations of NX1. Now uh, let's say NX2. So let's see uh, Marpol NX2, you have uh, definitions, then uh, noxious liquid substances. These are the main important things. Then main thing is your control of discharge of residues, PND manual, cargo record book. These are the main things as which is important for your uh, exams. Form for cargo record book for chips carrying NLS, PND manual format independent. Then we will see the PND manual uh, examples practically how it is. Then now let's start with some definitions. So it's uh, mostly same as uh, Annex 1, similar. Do you have a different set of, some different set of definitions? So some definitions can also change from NX1 to NX2 as per the cargo carry. So NX1 definition has to be used in NX1 and NX2 definition has to be used in NX2. So end root and all liquid substances, nearest land, all these same are there, same in your oil tanker also, NX1. Then uh, categorization, which you already seen. So categorization is same X, Y, Z and other substances. Main thing what you have to remember about categorization is that uh, the definition is such worded, you cannot even uh, change even a small word. Uh, any word cannot be changed. We have to remember it as it is. So shall cannot be support so changed with will or something like that. So many time registrations are like that, especially the definitions, we have to ratify them. Now let's see the next thing. Next is your uh, certificate of fitness or the certification. So certification uh, of certificate of fitness is a uh, certificate if the ship is uh, carrying uh, cargoes in uh, as per Marpur Annex to the construction equipment and procedures are as per can be followed as per the what you call Marpur Annex to so the certificate of fitness. And also you have an attachment of the cargoes and for which uh, what you call tank, it will be carried in some special requirements. So the validity of the certificate, what is it? It's five years. Then construction as construction requirements, generally not asked, which will include your ship type one, two and three. 
then we have regulation 13 control of discharge of residues this is the most important thing of chemical tanker which you have so what uh, we are saying here is that if you want to carry chemicals what you can discharge and what you cannot discharge so discharge standards uh, if the provisions of this uh, regulations allow the this discharging to see residues of category xyz following shall be complied so what first is ship should be proceeding en route at a speed of at least seven knots so now there are two things two major things if you will between oil and chemical in oil if you see discharge criteria was discharge has to be above water and here if you see you can see the discharge has to be through underwater discharge so why is that we have uh, in uh, oil tanker is above water and why in chemical tankers we have underwater so the main reason is that oil is floating on water so oil sheen can be seen so we want to see the sheen because we don't want oil to go into the water as we have we know it's a big very big pollution nowadays and it forms a blanket of oxygen there's a biological oxygen demand for marine life which is cut off we don't want oil to float or form a sheen on water and chemicals are soluble in water so they mix with water and they are marine pollutant but when they mix with water they their efficiency is reduced so we want to uh, discharge them under water so that uh, their uh, we are fully mixed and uh, their concentration is reduced so their effect is reduced then uh, next is uh, the discharge is made at a distance of not less than 12 nautical miles from the nearest land and depth of the water should not be less than 25 meters so this is for all the categories x y z uh, you have to follow for all the categories seven knots speed more than seven knots underwater discharge more than 12 nautical miles from land and 25 meters from the um, depth more than 25 meters depth so if you have a ship which is carrying both oil and chemical then you will have two overboard discharges one will be above water for nx1 and one will be under water for nx2 so one more reason why we are uh, doing it below water line that uh, the ship is moving at 7 knots so water is running behind and uh, once you the water is this underwater discharge so immediately it will uh, reach very fast to the propeller and where it will churn and mix with the uh, mix very fast like a mixer in is mixing something so the chemicals will mix with the water and the efficiency will be highly reduced and that's why you don't have this ppm requirement 15 ppm like you have in oil because all the oil is uh, mixed with water with this requirement so you don't have 1 by 30000 or this uh, 30 liters per nautical mile so it also that is that it should not exceed the maximum rate for the underwater discharge so there is a pipeline design which is taking care of the maximum rate so there is flow rate of the small pipe is a small pipe and that much only it in the, it can go in the water so next is uh, pre wash pre wash is something that uh, some cargo are very dangerous or the cargo is still sticking to your uh, tanks so before main washing we do a pre wash and that is called a pre wash so we after just after finishing the discharging we clean the tanks with fresh water 
for a specified one or two cycles as required by this annex or mentioned in your PND manual. So all category X cargo and some uh, viscous, highly viscous or solidly fine cargo of category Y have to be be washed. And then the pre-wash, whatever has been done, we have to give to the shore uh, reception facility and under the what you call supervision of a surveyor, we have to discharge it. So before only going alongside, we have to ask the terminal that our agent will ask you what will be the pre-wash quantity to arrange this reception facility. So once you do it by pre-wash, what is 95% of the cargo in the tank is already discharged to response reception facility. So the hazard is uh, almost gone of category X. So this hazard is cargo. So pre-wash. So for category X, Y, Z, all the categories, seven knots and uh, uh, underwater discharge, 12 nautical miles and 25 knot meters is common. Then uh, we'll see, especially for category X. The category X, what is main requirement is pre-wash. And then let's see 